could sing that song? You think they could? Um, I don't know if they could or not. I, they, I think they sing it every now and then. Um, uh, let's try it. Don't do it. Come on, Marty. She don't know that song. I seen it on the way down here, and she didn't know it. Uh, we'll skip it. Well, it goes like this. Uh, ten, <laughs> eight, seven, six, five. Ain't that the way you do it? Four, three, two, one. Blast off! Then it goes, somewhere in outer space, God has prepared a place. That's all I know of that song. What's the rest of it? That's it. The countdown's growing slower every day or something like that. Does she? Well, let's make her get up here and do it by herself. How many votes carry come up here and sing that by herself? Hey, 100%. That's always been her problem, rebellion. <laughs> Amen. Does anybody else know that song want to come sing it? Crystal does. Your boys know that, Alicia? Them boys back there behind you? Oh, them boys there. Oh, they do. Come on, boys. Yeah, be a, be a strong, brave man. I don't know the words, honestly. I'd do it. You've seen what i do right in front of all these people. That's on the internet. Me acting like that. I've done lost all my self-respect. No, I'm just kidding. All right, let's take our Bibles, turn to uh, the book of Genesis. Uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter 5, you will see the first astronaut. Astronaut means one who probes through the cosmos into the presence of the stars. It comes from two words, astro, of course, which means uh, star, and not. Uh, which means uh, that one has left the gravitational pull of the earth and escaped it. And besides the Lord Jesus Christ, there are three astronauts in the Bible. And uh, the first one is in Genesis 5, 24. And he's a man by the name of Enoch. And the Bible said Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. I used to, a old boy sitting down there, Barry Goodman's church sings that song, Was Nots. Uh, you got astronauts and cosmonauts, and we're going to be was nots one of these days. Uh, he, was, he, he, he walked with God and was not, for God took him. Isn't that verse 24? Did I get it right? 24. That's the first astronaut. The second astronaut, you don't have to turn to it, 2 Kings chapter 2 and 11, and that's Elijah. And God caught up Elijah in a chariot of fire, a uh, woo, like that, bam, man. I mean, he's all of a sudden like that, whoosh, right straight up in the sky. The third one is in the New Testament. That would be the Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 2, where he said, I knew a man in Christ. We're assuming he was referring to himself. How he was caught up to God. Those are astronauts besides the Lord Jesus Christ. There are others who will go through space without a capsule. Uh, that is the church. Uh, the Sputnik was the first, literally, uh, I think, satellite, Russia, sent in 1957, and uh, that was nine years after 1948. We'll come back to that year in just a minute. No such thing as that until after 1948. And that had even been 100 years ago. Uh, uh, 750 or 900 something so, since then. Uh, since then, trips into outer space. Tonight, we're going to talk about God's astronauts, you and I. The Bible said one day, the Lord's going to step out on a cloud like this, see? And he's going to step out on this cloud and he's going to say, all right, let's go. And when he does, gravity is going to lose its hold on me and you. And the Holy Spirit's going to pull us. That's called the rapture. And the word rapture, not in the Bible, means caught up. It means to be snatched. Ed Maccabee said the word rapture means, he said, I'll never forget him saying this. He said it means to be transported swiftly from one place to another. 
swiftly. That means, brother, now you see me. Now you don't. I got right there. That means we're going to be transported swift. What would you think tonight if all of a sudden, bam, something happened and about everybody in this room disappeared except for you and two or three more people? I hope everybody in here would. But if you're not saved, you wouldn't. We're going to count down, not all the way from 10, only five. All right? Here I got it here tonight. I've got this five. We're already down to five, and we're going to say five, four, three, two, one. That's what we always used to do at the ball games, you know. When we, we'd be ahead at the ball game, we'd be ahead 10 or 15, 20 points, and all our fans would all get around with the clock go down and go, uh, five, four, three, two, one. It was really exciting when the game was close. You know, somebody would sling it from the other end of the court or something like that, and everybody would about scream, five, four, three. Well, that's where we are on God's calendar. Five, four, three, two, one. What would be number five tonight? That would be quickly the travel and the increase of travel and knowledge. The Bible said in Daniel chapter 12 that knowledge shall increase. One of the major signs that we're right there at the coming of the Lord is the explosion of knowledge, scientific advancement, and technology just in the last 75 years, and especially the last 25 to 30 years. You know they say that 90% of all the scientists who have ever lived are living right now? I mean, brother, we are a scientific-minded generation. Who would have ever believed? Who would have, I would, we'd have never believed. Even when I was a kid, uh, that, that you could put a satellite, a big old thing, and you could put it up there in outer space, and somehow or another, it gets fixed, and it stays in some kind of orbit so that it's uh, shining down on the earth, and satellite waves bounce off of it. What's a wave? You can't even see it. What's a radio wave? Did you know right now there's about 15 different radio stations coming through this building and going through your body and several TV stations? They are. No wonder you think such crazy stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of waves passing through your body right now. You can't see them. You can't feel them. But you can prove they're there. All you got to do to prove they're there is bring a radio in here, put the antenna up, turn it on, bam, you can pick it up. So they're coming through here. They don't just look over and say, oh, there's a radio, let's go to it. They're already going through there. Whether there's a radio or not, they're moving through here. They're un unseen, unfelt, but they're wave. What is a wave? What is a, what is a, a laser being? What is all this stuff? I, I, I mean, I, they can't even explain it. We would have never believed, even, even 25 years ago, that things have, have progressed. I'm going to say just a thing or two about it, and you're going to sit there tonight, and it ain't even going to phase you. Most of you people are going to sit there tonight and say, what's the big deal? Did you know that we would have never believed that you could have had a phone? I remember the first cell phone I ever seen. I was in the airport, and I was going somewhere, and there was a guy going through there talking on the phone, and I stuck with it. Is he talking on the phone? Is that a walkie-talkie? Now, you kids think, Brother Danny, you, you lived when dinosaurs, that ain't been that long ago, y'all. I mean, I was, uh, I was going through the airport, and this guy thought, how is he doing that? And then the next thing I know, somebody at church had one in their car. I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I said, how in the world does your phone work in your car? Where's the line? They said, there ain't no line. It goes, it goes up, transport in the, in the air. And then people got them, the big, the cell phones, you remember the big old flip phones when they first come out, you know, and, and boy, everybody, and, and I remember a man told me, he said, uh, he said uh, boy, you better not get one of them. He said, you'll throw it in the river when you get your first bill. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe he's right. And then the next thing you know, next thing you know, let me show you, prove my point. How many of you people in here tonight on, have a cell phone. Would you raise your hand, please? Raise your hand, please. Why don't you look at that? Almost everybody in here. Now, you don't know, if you, if you have the internet on your phone, you have in your hand, you have in your hand access to the entire world. 
You can punch in the price of pineapple upside down cake in China and find it just like that if they eat uh, pineapple upside down cake. It might be right side up cake in China. Oh, they're walking around down there upside down, uh, uh, straight below us tonight. But I'm telling you, it's on there. It's on there. I remember when they first started doing that, we was going somewhere and some young people sitting in the back. And uh, I said something like, uh, where's so-and-so, where's so-and-so? And one of the kids in the back said, oh, that's right here, Brother Danny. I said, how'd you know that? They said, I Googled it. And I said, what do you mean you Googled it? You gargle? That sounded like it was trying to swallow. They said, I Googled it. Well, now, we don't think nothing about that. Do you realize tonight, folks, do you realize what you've got in your hand in that cell phone or on that iPad or that computer? You do realize that every generation that's ever been in history never had nothing even remotely close to what we've got now. You know, there's been an explosion of knowledge. You know, uh, uh, you can have a kidney stone now and instead of cutting you here and getting that kidney stone out, they can put you in a little thing like a, like a it looks like a tanning bed. Like it looks, it's round like that and put you in there and they move you through there and, and they turn on this little machine and you're gonna feel something going peck, 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 peck and somehow or another it goes through your skin and through your muscle and other stuff uh, we got right here, uh, muscle, skin, and uh, and uh, uh, and they uh, they it goes in there and it busts a rock. Now tell me how it goes in there and busts that rock and don't cut your skin. Anybody know how? Well, they have Well, I know, I know, but make it so we can understand it. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I believe. And I'm not sure about this. I can't back it up with scripture, but I think I'm right. I believe I'm gonna really get criticized for what I'm getting ready to say. But you'll catch up one of these days, and you people on the internet, you'll catch up one day if you do your homework. I believe that since 1948, on all this come out, man has had a little help with all this stuff. I believe it's coming. Did you know the word demon and demon has higher knowledge? And somebody, we got knowledge from somewhere that we used to didn't have. All of a sudden. And now they say technology is doubling every four months. It's coming at us 90 miles an hour. I, I, I'm not going into the ancient alien theories and all of that kind of stuff, which may very well be true. There's very much evidence that there was somebody here a long time ago that was very high advanced. There's rocks over there uh, in South America that is big as this choir, y'all, as big as this choir, and they're as slick as that wall right there. They had no tools to cut them. They had no way in the world to cut them things, and they're perfectly square. Some of them weighing over 100 tons, and they're up in the mountains in Peru, brother. I mean, where there ain't never been no electricity or nothing. There was some kind, Some the Bible said the sons of God saw the daughters of men, and they were giants in the earth in those days. You know what they done in, in Noah's day? They got a little help. They got a little help from some other supernatural power. And Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. I wouldn't doubt one bit when we get to heaven that the Lord don't rewind the, the tape a little bit and let us see that a lot of this technology and stuff come from the devil. And so through his ways and power. I, one, I said that one time and a man on the internet said, you're crazy, God gave us the internet. Now anybody that thinks God gave us the internet has lost their ever loving mind. I mean 99.9% .9 of it is straight from hell, amen? I'm telling you tonight, God can use it. God can use TV, God can use radio, but the big majority of it's not. Knowledge, travel, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable! What's going on? I mean, who would have believed that you could have just went tick, 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 and text somebody in California and they get it just like that? How does it get from here to California and find their phone? That means that text is going everywhere. That text is going up there hitting a satellite. 
when it leaves your phone and that satellite is sending it all over the United States so that wherever that person is, it hits their phone. That's a me- Can you imagine all the texts that are being sent right now and all the phone calls? How come they don't bump into each other? How come they don't start, uh, uh, Lord, have mercy. Now, how do you explain that? I'm telling you tonight, travel and not. You know what the Lord said? He said, knowledge shall increase. It's a sign. It's a sign we're near the coming of the Lord. When preachers preach that one man could rule the world and cause everybody to have a mark on their hand, people laughed at him. People thought, that's the stupidest thing I've heard in my life. They ain't nobody can run the whole world and get people in Africa and South America and chase them down and make it to where they can't, they can't do that. They don't laugh now. It is very possible now. Not only possible, it's probable. Not only probable, it's absolutely getting ready to happen. They're getting ready to make it where you won't be able to buy or sell without the mark. You listen to me tonight? That's a sign the Lord's coming back. When they used to preach, when them old preachers used to preach that the two prophets, Moses and Elijah, in Revelation chapter 11, would lay in the street dead for three days and the whole world would see them, people laughed at them. People thought, that's the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. There ain't no way everybody in the world can see two people in Jerusalem. Well, that's, that's normal knowledge now. Very, very possible. I'm telling you the old book said it would happen. It's coming right on down the pike. I'm telling you tonight when this book says something is going to take place you can take it to the bank brother. It's coming down. Number five. Now let me move on here a little bit this evening. Number four. Number four. You know what number four is tonight? You know what the number four sign as we count down to blast off? It would be the nation of Israel. Amos chapter 9 and verse 15. Luke chapter 21, verse 29 to 31. Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 1. The Lord said, he said, the fig tree will put forth its leaves and bud. Know ye that summer is nigh. And that that generation won't pass away till everything be fulfilled. You understand the Bible? You know that Israel is the fig tree nation. There was no nation of Israel for almost 2,000 years. They were scattered out all over the world. And in night, 1948, 1948, that's been how long? A 50, 17, 67, 69, am I right? Was it 1948 to now, is it 69? If I can do it standing up preaching, you ought to be able to do it. Uh, 69 years ago, somebody tell me if I was wrong. And I'm telling you tonight, brother, 69 years ago, uh, uh, they, they, they put up that little flag in Israel and that little flag went up like that. And brother, I'm telling you, the fig tree put forth its leaves and bud. The very year that for that was when that Roswell UFO crash was that changed the way people thought. Everybody started saying, maybe we're not alone. Maybe there is somebody out there. Maybe there is. And they are. But they ain't coming from outer space. They're coming from down there. Bible said Satan is transformed as an angel of what? Light. People said, well, I saw this light, and this light came in my room, and this, this orb followed me down the road when I was driving, and the brown mountain lights are orbs coming around. The, the Bible said Satan is transformed as an angel of light. And I'm telling you tonight, the nation of Israel began. The, uh, the, uh, the thing took place. Israel is the center of the earth. You understand that, right? They call it the earth's navel, belly button. And you know why? Because Israel is situated right between the three major continents, Europe, Asia, and Africa. And, and, and Israel holds them three together. That's, the, that's a civilization. The majority of the people in the world live in those three continents. And Israel is right in the middle of it. I'm going to tell you something tonight. God put his hand on Abraham. And Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him to righteousness and God made a covenant and a promise with Abraham. He said, I'll bless him and I'll bless his seed. And the Lord said, I'll bless them that bless you and I'll curse them that curse you. And it's still good today. God has not broke his promise to Israel. We are not the Israel that they were in the Old Testament. We are the church. God still is gonna keep his promises to Israel 
God is not done with Israel. God is not through dealing with Israel. God's earthly, earthly, you heard me, earthly people is the nation of Israel, the Jews. Ladies and gentlemen, those, those Jews are out of fellowship with God. They're stubborn. They're obstinate. And everything they touch turns to gold. That's why they wind up in New York City and Los Angeles where the money is. The Jews. You know why Gentiles don't like Jews? Because Gentiles love money and Jews can make money. Let me tell you. They rejected their Savior and they've been killed by the millions. You know what they said when they turned Jesus over? They said, His blood be on us and on our children. And God looked down and said, all right, you asked for it. Here we go. And they've been in a bloody bath ever since then. Hitler murdered six million Jews. They said in the Holocaust, they reaped. Uh, they've been excluded from schools. They couldn't own land. Uh, they, they wore badges of shame. They were killed by the millions. And the Palestinians are still fighting the Jews today over there, over that land. And Bin Laden, for him, but while he was over there, he said, he said, there, as long as there's one Muslim in the world, he said that Israel will, will not give up one inch of this land as long as there's a Muslim in the world Israel's not getting it but God promised that land to the Israel and God will one day uh, uh, return to them they'll get right they'll make a covenant with the, with the Antichrist for one week seven years in the middle of the week he'll break the covenant three and a half years put the mark on everybody then they'll run to the mountains then with them which are with, woe to them and with child them that give suck in those days then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains for great tribulation like the world's never seen ever will see again the nation of Israel is a sign people it's a sign that this old world is going down I'm telling you tonight ladies and gentlemen it's a sad sad day they were in since 1948 the Arab Israeli war they were uh, the Suez Canal war of 1956 this famous six-day war of 1967, Yom Kippur War of 1973, uh, and that shortest war in history, the Six-Day War. Ladies and gentlemen, they are God's earthly chosen people, uh, the estranged wife of Jehovah God. The church is the bride-to-be of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the church is engaged to be married to one day the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Israel, he's in the Bible, in the Old Testament, God said, I married her, and God put her away because of her unfaithfulness, but will be reunited with Israel one day. The nation of Israel is a sign. You say, why do you say that? Go find you a Hittite. Go find you a Jebusite. Now, any of them Old Testament uh, nations, you can't find a one, they're gone. They're extinct. There's still Jews in the world today and they're doing fine and though every nation on earth just about has tried to get rid of them people. You can't get rid of them. When I'm in the mall and one of them said, uh, uh, excuse me, sir, can I see your fingernail? And I said, no, you can't see my fingernail. And they, they want to do something to your fingernails. I'm a man. I don't need nobody to mess with my fingernails. I'll tell you, there's something wrong with a man that lets somebody mess with his fingernails. If you do it, it's your business. I think you're weird. And maybe more than weird. I can cut my fingernails and I'll cut them crooked if I want to. If I want to have a hangnail snag, well, I might need it for something. I'm, listen, and she says, she says, let's see your fingernails. I said, no, nah, I'm a man. And she, I said, she talks funny. I said, where are you from? Uh, she said, I'm from Israel. And you know what I do? I, I say, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. And she looks at me like, what are you doing? I said, I'm a Christian. And the Lord said, if I bless you, he will bless me. And they grin. And I say, I'm, bless the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, they don't, they, you know, they don't believe in Jesus. They rejected Messiah. And you know what I tell them? I said, you know, my, my Savior is a Jew. Oh, he is? Yeah, Jesus is a Jew, you know. You know, he is a Jew. He was a Jew. And ladies and gentlemen, they reject him. They're blinded until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And when God gets done with the Gentiles, he'll turn that clock back on and deal with them Jews again. Number 
four. Now, we're, I, I said that was number four. Here we go to number three. Number three. Number three. Some of you want to skip to zero, I know. Uh, but I'm going to look at number three. You know what the third thing is on our countdown? Five, four, three. Demonic spirits working in this world. We are seeing an absolute explosion of demonic activity. I'm telling you, the Bible said in the last days that many will leave the seducing spirits, plural, and, and doctrines of demons. I'm telling you, I've, I've stayed with some people down in South Carolina preaching. Some of you have heard me tell this story before. And, uh, and the guy told me, uh, he said, Brother Danny, he said, my wife, he said, uh, she's bothered. She said, demonic spirits, spirits mess with my wife. And I said, uh, why? And he said, because before she got saved, she was in all kind of tarot cards and Ouija boards. And she had these Ouija boards. She'd play with them, you know, and everything. And he said, when we got saved, he said, these spirits come to our house. And he said, they would come in our, in our bedroom at night and bother us. And I said, would, and talk to her. And she said, I said, did you hear them? He said, no, I couldn't hear them. But he said, there was a smell coming in our bedroom. He said, this smell was like sulfur. It was like rotten eggs. You know what that is? That's brimstone. That's the same smell they smell when UFOs landed. Over and over and over. Same smell. And it gets real cold in the room. And he said, they would come in our room at night. And he said, he said, I can tell when they're there. And he said, they come in our room and they talk to my wife. And they said, we're going to get you. We're going to get you back. We're going to get you back. And she said, you can't have me. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. And he said, those spirits said, we'll get your kids in. And they left their kids in the living room floor watching a movie and went to sleep in there. And she said, they got scared and run out of the bedroom and down the hallway. And they said, their kids were asleep in the floor, jerking like something had a hold of them all over the bedroom, all over the living room floor, asleep. He had no reason to make that up. He's a good friend of mine. He said, oh, that's silly. Listen, that's what the devil wants you to think. There's a revival of demonic activity through music, through drugs. You know the old saying, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, brother. You miss any one of them things, you get yourself opened up to spirit. When you get high, you smoke something, or you take pills, and you're listening to rock and roll, you are opening, it's just like opening that door right there. Mosquitoes will come in. You're opening up something in you for demonic spirits to come inside you. Do you hear me? You hear me, young people? You listen to rap music. You listen to rock music. You're opening up your doors for a demon spirit to come in you. Go ahead and think you're smart. Go ahead and think, oh, he don't know what he's talking about. Go ahead and think, I'm cool. I'm, I'm, I'm smart enough. There's been a lot smarter kids than you went down the tube. This flocka, meth, they say that people have superhuman strength. I show them a video, a man that got on that drug and six policemen got on that guy and couldn't hold him down. Six grown policemen couldn't hold one boy, and that boy killed a man and his wife. And when they come in, just a normal looking boy, I mean, he was a clean cut, nice looking young man, and they come in and he was chewing on that man's face that he had just murdered. And brother, they said six policemen couldn't hold him down. We are seeing a revival of this kind of stuff in our country tonight. Demonic spirits. Rock and roll singers say, when I go on stage, I get possessed. They're finding cows and pigs and dogs and cats everywhere, sacrificed, hanging up. I've got testimony after testimony. A boy that said, uh, they said, all us boys, we just felt like we ought to just take a cat or something out and just cut its guts out and hang it up and kill it and just offer it to the devil. What makes them want to do that? Listen, I was, I was a little mean growing up, but I never thought about nothing like that. It never even entered our mind. This stuff is spiritual. We're not talking about just fleshly sins. We're talking about spirits coming in and messing with young people. 
I do, I do think one spoke to me one time when I was at that Battle of the Bands. You've heard me tell, I was about 14 years old, and this band was on stage playing, and we was going, our band was going to play next. And I was standing there, and I was listening to the music like that, you know, and it was getting louder and louder and louder. And honest to goodness, I felt something just pull on me. They said, why don't, you, why don't you just give in? Why don't you just let yourself go? I remember that just as plain as day. I was about 14. And I pulled back and went, good night. That stuff was pulling on me. I guarantee you these people sitting in right here tonight that know what I'm talking about. You felt something pulling on you when you were smoking dope or you was listening. And I wasn't. I've never smoked drunk. I've never drunk a beer. I don't even know what that stuff feels like. But the music, just the music, had that much power, that much pull on you. You heard me tell that young girl, 17 years old, 17 years old. She was out with her friends. They was listening to a song by Prince. Prince that just died without God a few months ago. Died a Jehovah Witness or whatever he was, Mormon or whatever. And died, they said, without God unless he got saved in his last minute. And they said they was listening to a song, 17 years old, and they was all driving down the road real fast, and his song come on and said, would you die for me? Would you die for me? And they, she said, all of a sudden, something came in that car. And it was like something grabbed him, grabbed the boy driving, said, we're going to die. Will we die for him? Yeah. Will we die for him? Yeah. Let's have, and he was driving faster and faster and faster to hit a bridge. And the song ended, and they said that thing just left. And they didn't die. But she said, something come in that car. I've had person after person. I've had people in our church tell me, they said, Brother Danny, sometimes I'll wake up at night and I'll, I'll just feel like something's on me. Something's on me. I'm suffocating. I can't breathe. I can't move. I can't, I can't think. There's something in the room at night. Demonic spirit revival. Number two. Number two. Five, four, three, two. You know what it is? Corruption of religion. Corruption of religion. The Bible said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that was a strong delusion. The breakdown of religion is unbelievable. They never go to church, never read the Bible, never pray, but ready to sprout wings and fly away any minute. Mentality is killing our generation. Uh, you hear about preachers being arrested uh, for, for everything in the world. Drug deals, I heard about something, they busted two or three preachers up north uh, for being in a, dr uh, a child uh, uh, molestation ring and all kinds of ungodly things uh, of the priesthood and, and, and you know naked and public and God knows what. Ladies and gentlemen, eh, we are seeing a corruption of religion like never, ever, 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 ever before. I saw, was up there in West Virginia preaching last night. And the other night that boy told, this man told me, he said, Brother Danny, this used to be a powerhouse. He said, this church used to be packed. He said, you could hear them shouting, people getting saved. But he said, it wasn't just here. It was up yonder at the Methodist church. It was down there at the other churches. Churches all over the place were filled. People was getting saved. He said, now you can't even get nobody to come on Sunday night, Wednesday night. You can't hardly have nobody to pray. Nobody won't give. Nobody won't sing. Nobody won't live right. We are are seeing religion corrupted like on a scale we've never seen before. It's harder to get people to come to church. It's even harder to get them to come back and stay and serve God. They tell us preaching won't work no more. We need new methods. We need to water down the gospel. Get rid of the pews and bring in a couch and chair. Everybody drink coffee and just talk to each other and share each other. That's the only way we're going to get it done. I'm telling you tonight, that's a sign that the bottom is falling out. Boy told that me and Kelly was run bring him to church the other night. Brought him to church on Sunday morning. And I said, You come to church tonight? He said, No, I'm gonna go with my mom's. And I said, where, where's that at? Well, he said, it's in my house. I said, What do y'all do? He said, Well, we have people come over and, and uh, we we study the Bible. I said, I bet you do. I bet you they all sit in there and, well, I think this and I think that and I think this and I think that and that's their church. That ain't church, y'all. That ain't church. You know what you need in church? Somebody's better get up and preach the devil out of you. Yeah. 
at least two or three times a week. Everybody needs a devil preached out of two or three times a week. And all God's people say it. Corruption of religion. Christian rock, Christian rap. We never heard telling of such thing when I first got saved. We'd have laughed our heads off. There was rock and roll, the devil's music, and there was Christian, the Lord's music. Now it's all blended together. You can't tell which is which without we're just listening to it. I know some of y'all don't like that, but you need to get your heart straightened out. You know when music ain't right. Number one, and I'm done. Wickedness waxing worse and worse. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. No time for God. There's an 83% chance that every 12 year old in here sometime in their lifetime is gonna be hit by crime. It's getting worse and worse and worse. The drugs, the parties. Lady got on drugs not long ago, took her baby, took a razor blade. They cut that baby's eyes out with a razor blade. High, out of their mind, not even knowing what they're doing. That's not just being mean. It's not just being mean. It's not just being mean. You've heard me tell this story a long time ago. I'll never forget it. Ralph Sexton, told, Jr. told it, and he sang my heart and said, there's a woman got on an airplane over there in England somewhere and got on a plane coming to America, and it was like a nine, ten-hour flight, something like that, every long it takes, ten hours. She had this little baby, brand new, newborn baby in her arms, sat there that whole time, and the stewardess, you know, being a woman, she looked at that baby, and she just watched it, and she said the whole time that flight was, she never changed its diaper. It didn't cry. She didn't, the whole time, just sat there with it. So she told the authorities, she said, something wrong. She said, I think there's something wrong with the baby back there. That woman, it didn't cry. She never changed its diaper. She said, it didn't move the whole time on this trip. So they stopped her. And they stopped that woman getting off that plane. You done guessed it, that baby's dead. And she'd sit there with that dead baby in her arms that whole time, smiling, acting like everything was all right. That's a mama, ain't it? That's a mama. Brother, and they got that thing down, going to do an autopsy, and they took it downtown, and they found out it had been split from up here at its neck down to here and sewed up with stitches. They took them stitches loose and opened it up. All its insides had been completely, completely got out, and it's stuffed full of drugs. That's how she is smuggling drugs into this country. Just like nothing, carry it right on. We, you hear people all the time of, of people selling their kids for drug money. Now, I'm telling you, this demon of drugs gets in you just right, it'll turn you into a monster. They, there's, no, there's no limit to how low people go when they get on drugs just right. Wickedness, waxing worse. And I ain't even scratched the surface. You know, you hear it. You people ain't, you're not sheltered that much. You know how wicked this world is. And all I can say is, somewhere in outer space, God has prepared a place Countdown growing shorter every day. Five, four, three, two, one. Bam! We're going to be out. Y'all come on, let's stand by our heads for prayer. They're coming to get us a song tonight.